I'll just stick here. I'll just stay here. All right. Uh, yeah, I want to thank everyone for... Um, I want to thank Lass, actually, for, for allowing me to do this uh, lightning talk. Um, so basically what you're seeing right here is um, it's a talk about a new, well, a new offering from OpenSUSE uh, Leap. And it's going to kind of walk through various uh, aspects of, of a use case for OpenSUSE Leap. And this use case is, sorry, OpenSUSE Leap Micro. Uh, and this use case is... Uh, starting in Nginx um, with Raspberry Pi using this, so to speak, distribution. Um, if any of you are familiar with a uh, talk Richard Brown had given about microOS, um, think of microOS, or even silver blue, I guess, without the desktop version in this particular use case. Um, as Lubosch, who's actually uh, also online, so if you have any questions, just go ahead and ask him uh, online. But He's just kind of running us through like a, a basic setup, uh, dis describing the documentation and things like that. But, but what Leap Micro is really is it's it's sort of a it's a host OS. It's a uh, we're looking at um, using containers. We're looking at using maybe Git um, Git updates or you know testing some things out. Um, and he's setting up a, a USB with a, a script where you're using. Um, it's going to call. It's Trakut, um, Trakut um, options where you're basically describing the boot. And within this USB, um, you set this up, and once you download the image, um, in this case, as, as, as I just said, it's for Raspberry Pi, but we have various other images. Um, we also have some virtual machine images and whatnot. But in this use case, uh, that USB stick will allow you to... Um, when you start it up, it should be in, in the Pi, but you know you get an operate, operating system running, and then you just kind of use that USB stick as a, a supporting script to, to get the system running. But it, it actually is relatively easy, and you can do it pretty quickly. I think, Lubash, you could probably correct me, but I, I think you said something like 10 seconds, roughly, is what, what uh, you said on the boot time. Um, a lot of the documentation, though, about these, um, about ignition and combustion, uh, I think it's combustion, um, these boot systems, um, or direct boot commands for the boot system, um, there's a lot of documentation. And so what you end up, you, you'll have to kind of look into this to experience, like, you know, how you're touching these various things. Um, but anyway, um, with this host OS, uh, there's a difference between um, OpenSUSE MicroOS and Leap Micro. And the difference that is uh, between these two is really you have um, a release coming out every six months. And where MicroOS is based on snapshots of, of uh, tumbleweed. So that is sort of the difference. But then uh, as these come out every six months, um, you know, you're basically uh, allowing you to just run your system and keep going, but the support cycle will really go up to, let's say, for example, as he mentions, uh, if you hop on, it's called Micro 5.1, but uh, uh, that's the SUSE, um, that's the SUSE um, commercial version, I guess, but then you get the community version, which is uh, going to be Leap Micro 5.2, 2. Uh, you could go ahead and you can use that for like four years. Uh, so that's that's kind of nice. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the things that mentioned here is that uh, he's using Cockpit as the um, sort of the front end to get this uh, Nginx up and running. Uh, you'll see that he actually starts... So Lubash did this video, but you'll see that he uh, actually is using uh, some containers, like OpenSUSE containers, um, specifically Nginx. He, um, there was no really reason for the one he picked, but um, toward the end, you'll actually see him get this up and running. Um, let's see. Um, one of the things that has to be set is the... Um, XT4 
um, is also uh, touched and you kind of have these pre-configured images that you're gonna need to select when you go to the um, OpenSUSE page and then you, um, which is git.opensuse.org. Um, and you'll see there uh, a logo with a circle and a logo with like a diamond. And basically Leap Micro is the one with the diamond. Um, but they relatively do a lot of the same things. Um, so you can see uh, the basic configurations that he has set that he's setting up here. Um, but you have to put in password and get that running, which is what we have here. And then you basically do the configuration. Um, let's see here. So the documentation that you will find is gonna be SUSE documentation, but of course after, um, so this kind of goes along with the, the OpenSUSE Leap uh, 15.4 release that we have coming out in June. So currently what you're seeing here is sort of like the, still a testing phase, um, but a lot of that will shift um, once we go have the official release, which is when you'll start seeing some of the OpenSUSE documentation. Um, but right now, if you are interested in, in checking it out, uh, you can go ahead and go to the SUSE documentation. Uh, there are um, x86. Um, I'm not quite, of course, there's a lot, of, there's a few ARM um, 64 images. Um, and specifically, he kind of used this as a use case. And I mean, as we go forward, will we end up like with this being like using flat packs or snaps or things like that? We don't, we don't necessarily know. We're, I mean, that's, that's for the community to decide. And what we, what we do have coming forward um, to sort of take a look at is we have some meetings that are coming up in the OpenSUSE project where we do some community meetings. Um, and we have two, two that are gonna take place and we're kind of gonna describe yeah, a little bit about the next next version um, or what, what may be coming after Leap 15.4. Um, but we'd like sort of your feedback uh, and see where we could go from there. I mean, there's a lot of use cases. We were just, I was talking with Lou Bosch the other day and we're like, well, you know, how can, how can we use some of the apps that we have? Like, what would be an interesting use case? And we thought, well, what happens if you create, you're able to use this and, you know, create container and get some sort of like, like Caden, KDE Live, you know, or Caden Live. Like, and you could have a team across the world actually just editing video using the same, um, the same, um, uh, yeah, containers or whatnot. Your, your, your workflow actually ends up uh, being, yeah, optimized. So, but these are, these are kind of interesting things. I and mean, this is relatively new. Where this goes, we, we don't necessarily know, but you know, it's there, it's, it's for you to test out, and we hope you do. And um, we hope that you actually join us for our meetings that we're gonna have where we kind of discuss like where things like this will possibly head. So I appreciate you and thank you. Anyone has any questions, ask Lubash in the channel because he's there. <laughs> Excellent. Way to hand off to the online questions. So now we get to switch.